Hello friends, I'm David Vos. It's good to see everybody today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Friends, I've got some information for you. This will be the most important video I've ever done. Hands down. Except for all the videos I'm going to be doing after this one because I've determined that this is the most important subject we need to be talking about. So I'm going to do most of my videos um, with this, this information in mind from now on. Because this is going to be a key. The information in this video is going to be a key that will open every door. It will give you eternal life. You'll never die. If you use this information, you can heal any disease immediately. If you're in prison, you can walk right out. I'm not, I'm not fooling you. I know, it's never happened before. You've never seen it before. It's never happened before. It's never been recorded in human history except for in the Bible. And so you think that maybe the Bible isn't true. Or some of you said, well, I believe in the Bible, but it's a mystery. And, you know, and someday we're going to have all these things. Well, I still believe in the Bible, even though... Or, or some of you say, yeah, I believe it because uh, in my church, somebody had a hurt knee and they prayed for their knee and now it's better. But have you ever seen anybody raised from the dead? Have you ever seen anybody who's a paraplegic get up and walk? A real person, somebody you know and is verified. Uh, have you ever seen somebody do an actual miracle? Jesus did. He did miracles. But there's a bunch of stuff that we didn't know, that we haven't been told. And there's things that are in the verses in our Bible that are slightly mistranslated that we didn't know about. And I know it sounds amazing. And I know it sounds all dramatic and everything. And, 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 and no, um, I'm not lying to you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you how you can pray if you're in prison and open up those doors and walk out. I'm going to show you how if you're in a hospital lying there dying and you've got two days to live, how you can walk out of there perfectly and completely well. And so this is going to be the most important video you'll ever you'll ever hear and I suggest you watch it all the way through and give it all your friends because this is the most if what I'm saying is true this is the most important video that's ever been made and I guarantee you that I'm telling you the truth so Mark 11 23 and 24 says whosoever then shall say unto this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea. Ooh. If you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you say will come to pass, it will. Do you believe that? Christians, do you believe that? I think some of you are saying, well, Dave, I, you know, I believe in the Bible and that's very symbolic and you don't know what you're talking about. Or, yeah, I believe it, but, you know, we just don't have enough faith today. And um, So nobody in the Christian world has enough faith to do this. Something you're going to learn in this video is that you don't have to have enough faith. Everybody has faith. We all already have a measure of faith. Faith isn't something to get. It's something to use. You're just not using your faith because no, you don't know what it is. In this video, we're going to talk about faith, belief, doubt. You don't know what doubt is. You don't know what that Greek word is that they translate doubt. It's not really even doubt. And even if you translated to doubt, by doing that, you're still not explaining to people what it means not to doubt or how to do this. 
You're telling them not to do it, but you're not explaining to people how not to do it. But you see, the actual word, the Greek word, explains how not to do it because it's an explanatory word and we're not getting a correct translation. It's not just don't doubt. See, that would be inhuman. That would be completely impossible. Let's say I told you, all right, now, you see that big mountain over there? I want you to just tell that mountain to move. Now, don't doubt about it. Just do it. You can't do that. Jesus wouldn't have told us to do something that we can't do. You've got a million dollars in your pocket right now. Just reach in there and get it. Don't doubt now. Because if you doubt, you're not going to get it. Well, then you're not going to get it because you've never seen that happen before. And there's going to be some doubt. Maybe if Jesus Christ came down and looked you right square in the eye and said to do it, you'd believe because you'd assume that, well, something special was happening and, you know, you believe Jesus. But, but Jesus is telling you now, and Jesus said, you know, happy is he who does not see me and yet believes. Remember when, when Thomas didn't believe that it was him resurrected and he, put his, he wanted to put his hand in the side and Jesus said, stop being an unbeliever and just believe. But what does it mean? All you Christians are out there saying, I'm a believer, are you? Because if you're a believer, then you should be doing great miracles. Healing the sick. The Bible says go out there and heal the sick, but you're not doing it. For 2,000 years, nobody's been healing the sick. So, let's go on. Maybe that's symbolic. Maybe this mountain he's talking about that we can move is just some, some symbolic thing he's talking about. He's not really being serious. So, verse 24 says, because of this I tell you. Because of what? Because of the fact that you can, uh, if, now, if you go into Matthew, I think it's um, chapter 21, 18 through 22 or something. It explains a little bit further about how that they were going along and they saw this fig tree and Jesus cursed the fig tree. And then they came back the next day and it was all withered. And the disciples were marveling because how quickly it withered. And they said, wow, you know, and Jesus said, yeah. And, and not only can you do that with this fig tree. But you can do it with the mountain. You can wither a fig tree just by your word. And not only that, you can tell that mountain. To another place it tells you you can command that mountain to be uprooted and thrown into the sea. And it will obey you. See, all these verses in different places of the Bible, you've got to read them all. Because they all give you a little different piece. One verse is going to explain to you how to believe. What it means to believe. And another verse is going to explain to you what it means to not doubt. And if you've never heard this. This has never been told. This is a key that opens every door. I guarantee it. So, well, maybe it's not true. No. Titus 1, 2 says, God cannot lie. And Jesus is the word of God. And so, Jesus cannot lie. So the word of God tells us that we can have any we want so long as we believe and don't doubt in our heart. So verse 24 says, because of this, I tell you, because of this mountain that you can, I told you, you can just tell it to do it, you know, just don't doubt in your heart and believe that whatever you say will happen and it will. And because of this, I tell you, that all things, not just this mountain. I use the illustration, Jesus said, of this mountain because that's impossible, right? Who could, who could move a mountain, right? But he says, that's the reason I use that illustration because I want you to know that all things whatsoever that you pray, that you desire when you pray, if you believe that you already have it, you shall. Wow. What is Jesus trying to tell us? He uses the illustration of a mountain that can be moved with faith. And then he says, because of the reason I say this is because I want you to know that everything and anything and all things whatsoever he uses two different words. He didn't have to. He could have just said all things. 
but he said all things whatsoever. And there's two Greek words there. And they're translated correctly. All things whatsoever ye ask. Believe that you've already received it and ye shall. Is that part of the key? You've got to believe that you've already received it? Yes, it is. But there's a lot here and we're going to go through this. The first problem that we're having here is we've got to believe and not doubt and we've got to say and we've got to believe that we've already received. Those are four things that we've got to do. Very important because all the way through the Bible it gives us little pieces of this. And in another place it says don't be afraid, just believe. So fear has something to do with it. Can't be afraid. Let's say you're in a trash compactor and the walls are coming in and you've got five minutes to live and you start praying, don't, you know, save me, save me. Are you going to be afraid? Well, you can't be afraid. Well, how can you do that? It's impossible. So Jesus was just lying to us, just telling us some, you know, bunch of hogwash or just teasing us. No, there's an answer here, friends. It's never been understood in 2,000 years and you're about to hear the answer. Let's look at the word doubt in that Matthew uh, eleven twenty three, because we must not doubt. In fact, James says the very same thing. James says, anyone lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And he says, but do not doubt at all, because anyone who doubts is like the waves of the sea. And that man that are just tossing and turning, and that man is unstable in all his ways. Do not suppose that a man like that is going to receive anything from the Lord. You see, you're absolutely not going to receive anything from the Lord if you don't believe. Because if you believe, you're going to receive. But if you don't believe, you're not. It's as simple as that. When Jesus walked up to somebody and said, um, you know, they said, heal my leg or, you know, or, uh, my daughter's dying or whatever. He always said, do you believe I can do this? And if they said yes, he said, then according to your faith, may it be. So you see, Jesus never did anything. Oh, Jesus is always the one that does it. That's why he says uh, in John 14, 13, whatever you ask me, I will do. It's Jesus who does it. But what is Jesus? Jesus is the Christ. We're all in union with Christ and he's inside of us. The Christ being, the spiritual inner man, that great, powerful inner man that has that power. And he, that's the one who does it, not the outer carnal man. So Jesus is always the one. You've got to believe that he will do it. But you cannot doubt. And James says you cannot doubt, and so does Matthew. But now, and Mark. But, um... There's quite a few verses in the Bible that talk about this, this waves. Um, Peter sees the Lord walking on the water and he wants to walk on the water and he starts walking on the water and then he, he sees the wind and it scares him and he starts to sink. And we're going to get into that one a little bit here in a minute. So there's the waves that, that he drowns, he starts drowning. Um, there's the story about how Jesus was in the boat sleeping and then the storm came up and he was about to die. And Jesus, they woke him up and he says, ye have little faith and he calmed the winds. Because you see, there's a simple thing going there. The winds are your thoughts. The ocean is your emotions and your beliefs. We're gotta, we've got to understand then what it means to believe and what it means to not doubt. Because that's where the key lies. So in Matthew chapter eleven twenty three, it says, don't doubt. Now, what is that word? That word doesn't mean doubt. Not just, it might, you could translate it that, but, but the Greek word's more explicit. It, it explains what it means. It says, don't reason. Um, th they say it could mean separate, distinguish, or judge. So don't reason it out. Just believe. Now, why would that be? 
let's say that you, first of all, what is a belief? What is a belief? Is it, is that what it is? You know, I'm trying to believe. See, that's where we, we've never figured this out because we don't even know what belief is. I mean, there's different ways we use the word. I believe that you're telling me the truth, but you're not saying you'd stake your life on it. So to what degree do we have to believe? And, and um, does it really mean just to trust? Does it mean that, you know, this is the problem. If you have a concept, a thought, that's a belief. Not just one thought, but a thought construct of, or a concept that says, I'm going to have a, a brand new car in my front yard. It's going to be red. It's going to be fast. It's going to be luxurious. It's going to have new tires. All right, all those are thoughts, but they all belong to a construct, to one concept. Let's say you say, I'm going to have that. Well, then it's automatic that you're thinking about that. You're not thinking of a green car when you say a red car. So I want a red car. But then you're thinking about a green car. Now, that's a different thought that belongs to another construct, another concept. And if indeed it's our belief, our concept that we've asked for, what we've desired, and we entertain another thought that's totally different. Now we're unstable. There's another verse in the Bible that says, the eye is the lamp of the body. And if the eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. Again, not translated well enough to where, to, so that we could even understand it. But he's not talking about the physical eye there because, um, Light does go into the eye, but it's kind of talking symbolic there about one eye, your eye, your eye. He's talking about your vision. And if your vision is single, now in that Greek, it's talking about unfolded. So there's no lines or wrinkles or demarcations or it's not broken up. It's just one piece, one vision. Don't have any uh, distinctions just have one whole concept be focused because if you have another concept that contradicts that concept then it's only going to be a fear because you see this is what you want this is your construct this is your concept that's what you want but if you come up with another thought that contradicts that one then that's going to make you afraid that you can't have that one so these are fears. So yeah, it's a doubt. That's what it is. But, but what does it mean not to doubt? It means you have a belief and that's it. You don't reason and come up with other ideas and thoughts and just start reasoning from your carnal self about how, well, this would be impossible. Well, I don't know how a car is going to get there. Where, you know, who's going to drive it there and who's going to give it to me and who would give me a new car? And, you know, that's impossible, right? Don't do that. Because you've just, if it's true, and this is what we're going to learn today, that this physical world, we've said this before, everything in this world, the physical world, is an illusion. The reality is in the spirit. That's why you have to receive before you you can actually get it in the physical world because you receive it in its reality first in the spirit. And if you hold that thought and don't contradict it, if you believe, you, you speak and you say and you believe what you say and you don't come up with another saying and another thought that would bring up fears or a different construct, then what you believe, what you speak with your word, just like the Lord did in 11 uh, Hebrews, it says that uh, the whole universe was created by faith, that God said, let it be, and it was. See, Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And all things came into existence through the word. You say something, and you're forming a thought. 
You mean what you say. You say, let it be and it shall be. But now if you say, oh, but now that can't be true, what I just said. You know, let's do something else. See, words mean something. And whatever you say, it's going to happen. So if you're afraid, then you're just, bring, you're just unstable in all your ways. Your ocean, the winds come down on your beliefs. Your thoughts come down, and there's too many thoughts that are contradictory. Any thoughts contradictory, it makes it unstable. See how the Bible works? You've got Peter walking on the water, and he sees Christ, and he's walking on the water, and then he sees the winds, or he's got all these thoughts. Boom, he begins to sink. Is that it? Too bad for Peter, right? No. Because he got his mind off the winds and he saw Jesus and Jesus reached his hand down there and pulled him up. Don't worry, you get another chance. Just keep practicing. But what you've got to do is understand that you have that Christ within you who commands the winds and says, be still. And tells the waters to be calm so that the little boat that you're in can come to rest and you can be saved and you won't drown you're not going to drown if you believe in that Christ within you who has authority and says such and such and if you believe that and you say such and such it will be done just what you what you've already received in the spiritual which is real it'll it'll manifest in the physical every time because you have that authority by Christ that's within you and because you have that authority, you cannot be wishy-washy. That would make you unstable. You can't keep saying things that contradict each other. You've got to stick with what you're saying. Believe it. So, the next question is, so does this work with everything? I mean, can I only have this and that? But if I'm in prison, I can't get out of prison, right? If I'm critically dying and ill and stuff well, surely it wouldn't work then right it only works for like you know hurt knees and colds and respiratory problems that nobody can really prove whether no jesus said let me give you an illustration i can tell that tree to be withered up and it'll just obey me not only that i can take tell you that mountain is going to be removed and it's going to be removed and because i've said this i've i'm, I'm, I'm basically explaining to you that all things, everything, nothing is excluded, nothing. Don't let anybody ever tell you that, well, some things, you know, aren't according to God's will. All that means is that everything you say in faith shall be done. Nobody's going to want to hurt others or murder people or that would be, that would be the only way you could do anything out out of God's will, out of the will of faith, out of the will of love, peace, goodness. So long as what you're asking is good, wholesome, you have the right to ask for all good things. Our Father in heaven wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you in prison. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you walking miles to the market every day and not being able to provide for your family. He doesn't want you lonely and all by yourself. He doesn't want you sad. He wants you fulfilled and complete and whole. And everything whatsoever, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, everything that you desire when you pray, you shall have if you believe. But you've got to know what belief is. Belief is something that you choose to believe in, that you choose to want, a desire. And doubt in the Greek means to reason. So don't reason. Don't come up with other excuses. Don't come up with fears or other concepts that would contradict it because you must speak and use your will and say it shall be and that's the only way it's going to happen if you don't do that if you if you contradict yourself if you don't believe then it's not going to happen 
So you have to persevere in prayer. Because if you go out there and you say, I'm gonna walk on the water and then you start to drown, and then you just give up, you're gonna drown. Take Jesus' hand. He's right there, don't worry about it. He's not gonna let you down. But if you don't take his hand, you're gonna drown. If you don't believe, you're, you're not gonna get what you ask. So if you don't believe and you make a mistake and you begin to drown, don't worry, he's still there. Start over again. Persevere, pray continually. Just keep praying until you mean what you say and say what you mean. And you're not, and, you, and just say what you want and believe it and don't reason in your mind and wait until it's manifest in the physical world. You pray, your leg's broken and you say, hey, my leg is well, it's whole and complete. And you look down, it's still broken. Don't, don't then automatically say, oh, it's still broken and it didn't work. Now you've just created another thing in the spirit realm that contradicts the, the, what you said before. This is the winds in the spirit that's gonna come down into the physical and create this contradiction. You've got to stay true to your word. You've got to believe. There's no other way. You can't just keep thinking contradictory thoughts. So you have to have faith. Now, that's why it says, don't be afraid, just believe. Because you see, Peter, when he started walking on the water, he saw the winds or all these other ideas and thoughts, fears, and he got afraid. So you can't be afraid. If you feel afraid, you're not doing it right. You've got contradictions and fears and thoughts and doubts going on in your mind. It's not going to work. So you say, well, I, I can't. I can't believe. It's too hard. Look, all you have to do is do what Jesus said. Come up with a desire. Pray. Say you're in prison. You say, Lord, get me out of here. I want to walk out those doors. Okay. Then a minute later, you're going to say, well, that'd be impossible. Those doors are iron and... The court says I'm in here and they're not going to let me out. And All right. And remember, you are a spiritual person. You're a child of the living God. You're not this physical body, this illusion. Don't believe all the, the thoughts and doubts and everything that puts you here in this physical situation. You're a spiritual child. And in a spiritual world that's within your heart you can believe and create anything you want and the physical world will manifest it if you don't believe you're a spiritual child of god then you can't do this you got to believe that you're a, that you, you got to believe in christ if you believe in christ and you believe that you are joint heirs with him that you are one with christ as he is one with the father and that whatsoever you say you know the greater works will you do because he went his way unto the Father. And he's here inside of us. The Christ, the power, he's in the source. We're all connected. We're all one through the super conscious mind. We're all one. We're not this physical world, which is all carnal and full of lust and fear and death. The illusion. We're part of the reality, which is in the source. So, we are joint heirs with Christ. Now, this is not a religious thing. Those of you who don't believe in religion and you're not, maybe you're not even a Christian, this is for you. This is science. This is just energy, vibrations. It all comes from thought forms. Thought forms create the world. The world is created by a vibration. You set in motion certain vibrations, certain thoughts that create thought forms, and they create the physical. But they're illusions. You can change your mind. So you say you want a green car. Then you say, oh, I want a red car. You're not going to get a car in the physical realm doing that. You've, this is scientific. Christ is not some mythical thing you're a real person okay you're a real person this is real 
and within you is your source, your super conscious mind. And that's called the Christ. And that's the word, that's where the word is spoken through that authority that's within you. So we do nothing in the name of this world, but we do things in the name of Christ. And whatsoever we do in his name, in that only begotten son, because you see the physical world's not begotten of the father. This is the carnal world, which is an illusion. That's not the father's world. You've got to act in the real world. The only begotten son is the son that's within you. The spiritual child. You're children of the spiritual God. So, anyway, we've got to get out there and, and get this working. This, will, this is going to save the world. This is going to revolutionize the world. This is science. This is the modern truth that must go forward. Because it's time. We're, we've been tossed to and fro long enough. We've been dying long enough. Let's pass over from death to life. All we got to do is believe it because we are the ones who do the believing. We're the ones who make the thought forms. We're the, we make our own world. Let's make our own world. Let's do what's right. Let's love one another. That's all we got to do. Turn the other cheek. Forgive. Let's take all these carnal fears and hate and all of this stuff out of the equation. And let's start doing what the inner spiritual Christ does, which just says, let it be, and it is. But it's not manifesting in our world because we're in control. We have to, uh, we have to do, we have a free will. We have to use our will. You have to use your will properly or else your world's going to be all messed up. You're responsible. So let's start doing it. Let's start believing in the truth. And the truth will set us free. So this here is David Vos. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.